Hey everybody, this is Jen. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to go harvest some of my bee balm and I'm going to show you what it looks like and then how I dehydrate it to save it for use later on. I want to get it done now before it gets too hot and too thick this summer where it actually gets powdery mildew. So I'm going to take you out to my garden right here on Garden Jen's Journey. Okay, so this is bee balm. This is one of two different varieties of bee balm I have growing in my garden. And I'll zoom you in so you can kind of see what it looks like. It's in the mint family as it grows and spreads kind of like mints do, but you can see that the leaves are pointed uh, differently than mints are. It's a beautiful plant. It has beautiful flowers on it when it goes to flower. But right now I am harvesting it before it puts out a flower head so I can get the, the leaves which are great for medicinal use. And trying to thin it out now helps prevent powdery mildew. Um, this grows so thick and so dense that it's very susceptible to powdery mildew because there's not enough circulation within the plant group. And uh, so it gets powdery mildew and that renders it unusable for medicinal use. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom this back out and I'm going to thin this out a little bit and just show you how I harvest this. Alright, so like I said, I'm going to thin this out a little bit because it grows very dense. It, like mints, they grow very dense and that's why this gets powdery mildew because it's so dense the air cannot circulate in here and dry it out. And so I'm going to thin this out a little bit and uh, be able to use this to dehydrate for later. This makes a wonderful tea and it has some great medicinal properties as well. So I'm just going to thin this out a little bit by cutting it down. And usually you do this in the morning is when the, it's got the most medicinal properties in it because during the day they kind of go back down into the root system and it's not as potent but um, it'll be fine um, for what I'm doing and I can also use this time to get the weeds that are in here out. I have quack grass that grows in my garden and if anybody knows anything about quack grass it's darn near impossible to get it out. <laughs> So we're going to thin this out a little bit, take out the quack grass as we can. And really give this plant some room to breathe and give us some um, leaves and stuff that we can use for tea. And you don't have to worry about over pruning this place that is like a mint and mints just are almost impossible to kill so you're really not going to overdo the pruning on this we're just thinning it out a bit so I can get that fresh air through here and not get the powdery mildew there we go that's looking pretty good Now we got quite a bit of airflow in here, so it should not get powdery mildew as bad. And we can always come back later and thin it out again, just to keep this nice airflow going in here. And then these eventually are going to put out beautiful uh, flowers. I believe this is my red one. There's a red and there's a purple. And there's also the lemon bee balm, which I grew last year, but it did not come back, which is a double-headed blossom it's really pretty but I got this thinned out right now 
and I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this and we're going to put it in my dehydrator. So let's head on into the kitchen. All right, so this is our container of bee balm that we just harvested. You notice how wilted it is already. It's quite hot out here in May, which is unusual for Michigan. Um, but anyways, we're going to go ahead and we're going to sort this, get all the incidentals out of here. We have some quack grass, and I think I also saw some lamb's quarter in here. So we're going to go ahead and sort that because um, we don't want to eat grass and right now we're not going to eat lamb's quarter even though that is a very good weed that you can actually eat and I'll show you that in another video. I'm just going through getting out the grass. <clears throat> Alright, looks pretty good. Looks like I only have another grass right there. I have to be careful when going through this because at this stage, when lamb's quarter is growing, it looks kind of similar. It has a different leaf structure, but in the beginning, when they're growing, if you're not paying attention to what your leaves are looking like, you could easily mistake it for bee balm. And though it's not poisonous or anything, um, when you're trying to dehydrate, you want to make sure that what you're dehydrating is what you want to dehydrate at that time. Alright, so there we go. Now I'm just going to take this and stripping it down is very easy. I'm going to grab my tray here like so. And I'm just going to take it and slide it off the stock like so. Very easy. Just break off the top. There we go. I'll probably do two or three trays of this. There's another grass, don't want that. <clears throat> All right. All right. You don't want it too thick because you want to make sure that the air flows through here and dries it out evenly. So there we go. So there's one tray done. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of them put on the trays and I'm going to get them into the dehydrator. Alright, so I have my dehydrator loaded with three trays of bee balm. And since I have three trays, I, make sh I made sure to space them apart. This uh, dehydrator holds six trays, um, so I was able to space them every other slot to make sure there's enough air circulation through here. And these will dry quite quickly, probably four to six hours, uh, depending on the humidity um, in the room. And right now it's kind of humid for me. It's just really wonky weather. But I'm going to go ahead and get this started, and I'm going to show you what temperature we go on. So I'm going to go ahead and close this door. Alright, so my dehydrator has a temperature dial and it's very important uh, when you're dehydrating that you have a dehydrator that has an adjustable temperature because produce and herbs and things like that uh, dehydrate best at a lower temperature where uh, meats and things do best at the higher temperature. So um, for uh, herbs, I generally dehydrate between 110 and 95 degrees. So you can see my dial is right in the middle here. And then if I'm doing produce later, I'll move it between 110 and 120. Again, depending on the humidity. I don't like going above 120 because it tends to dehydrate uh, too fast and um, gets the surface 
dehydrate and instead of the middle of the item so I dehydrate uh, lower and slower and it seems to work fast so I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and we're going to let this dehydrate at least four hours come back and check on it and it might take around six or eight again it depends on how high the humidity gets uh, today uh, as to how long it's going to take to dehydrate and while this is going I'm going to put above or actually in a card um, in the video here the different ways that you can use bee balm okay so our dehydrator has been going for a while now um, I've been actually quite busy with some different things and then the Sabbath came and we don't do any work on Sabbath so I just let this continually run. It's on a low temperature. I'm not worried about it being overdone. So I'm going to go ahead and shut the dehydrator off. We're going to open it up. And then this is what it looks like right now, dried. So we're going to let this sit for about 10 minutes or so, so it can cool down, and then we're going to put it in our jar for long-term storage. Okay, so to store my herbs, I store them in mason jars uh, with lids that uh, I had previously used for canning, and because you can't use canning lids for canning once you... Uh, pop the top so to speak um, I use them for a dry storage afterwards because they still work just fine for dry storage they're just not safe to reuse for canning purposes so I have my lid and my ring and my jar in my funnel and we're just going to take the uh, bee balm and we're going to put it into this jar Now you notice the jar looks pretty full, but it's actually not. This, there's a lot of air space in here. So we're just going to smoosh this down gently. Let's see how much that, that condensed. <clears throat> Alright, there's our jar. We're going to put our lid on it. And screw it on there. And then we're going to let this sit on our counter for a day or two and wash the jar, see if there's any moisture buildup in the jar, which means that this has not completely uh, dehydrated. Um, it shouldn't be a problem. This has been dehydrating for a few days. But you always want to make sure before you put this back in a cupboard somewhere, that you let this set out on your counter for a few days just to make sure that there is no moisture buildup in here um, which is a sign that this, this is not dehydrated. If there was moisture buildup in here you simply just take the contents dump it back onto your dehydrator tray and dehydrate it some more. Just that simple. So we're just going to set this here and make sure that there's no condensation and then this is going to go back into my pantry. So I figured I would show you my pantry, or at least part of it. Um, it's a small size pantry because this is a smaller home. But I have a whole shelf 
and it goes all the way back there. I do have some stuff stuffed in front of it. But this whole shelf here, and it's about six to eight foot long and two feet deep, is full of medicinal herbs that uh, most of them I have grown myself. And then there are others that I've had to buy, um, like the charcoal and just some other ones that um, I cannot grow here myself. But this is where I store all my herbs that I have dehydrated. I'll be showing you more herbs that I'll be harvesting out of the garden in some future videos, so watch for that. But they get stored in here, and then the lights go out. So that's it for today's video on dehydrating and preserving bee balm from the garden. I hope this video was useful to you, you found it interesting, if so make sure you give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Thank you for following me along on this journey. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button below so you can stay updated on other videos I show about gardening tips, dehydrating, chicken adventures and all sorts of neat stuff right here and i hope that wherever you are you are wonderfully blessed so until next time everybody bye bye